Welcome on the presentation uh, Electrosmog Prevented, where we look on uh, protection against non-ionizing radiation from the risk analysis perspective. We will have brief introduction, then look at biological context and complete protection from harmful effects of non-ionizing radiation. We will have some detailed examples for protection measures in particular situations. And last, we will have an executive summary. Let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Martin Matulik, and for 12 years now, I'm involved in topics around biological effects of non-ionizing radiation. Last four years, I have uh, work experience with emerging technologies in the risk assurance department. And why have I started to deal with uh, electrosmog? First, it was pretty complex topic and I was dedicated to find the truth. Then I wanted to share my knowledge so we all can effectively reap benefits of uh, modern technologies without unnecessary adverse health effects. Okay, so electromagnetic fields are an integral part of modern life. They emerge from electronic devices, wireless communication, household wirings, and so on. We should be concerned about protection from electromagnetic fields because of the potential health risks that are associated with them. And the goal of this presentation is to provide insights and practical advice for effective protection against harmful effects of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation. So why should we care? Our world is becoming increasingly digital, exposing us to more electromagnetic radiation sources. Prolonged exposure to non-ionizing radiation can potentially lead to health risks, so we must be informed and take protective measures to ensure our well-being. Let's look into biological context where these adverse effects arise, so we can decide what protective measures would be most efficient. What do we know based on the current scientific knowledge? We know that adverse health effects resulting from thermal biological effects are well anchored in health protection legislation in form of exposure limits. These are based on internal recommendations from organizations like ICNIR. However, there is a scientific controversy on adverse health effects resulting from non-thermal effects when absorbed energy causes any other changes. Therefore, I have dedicated more than seven years to answer one essential question in the light of current scientific knowledge. Has electromagnetic field have health risks under current legislation? And with 75% probability, I can say yes. Precisely, yes, electromagnetic fields can have biological effects that may result in adverse health effects when body compensatory mechanisms are overwhelmed by biological effects of electromagnetic fields or other stressful agents. This uh, results from the analysis of competing hypotheses, which you can look into more detail on the link below the video. So, how biological effects result in health risks? First, uh, we have living cells or our body exposed to electromagnetic field. This will translate into changes via physical mechanisms, which will result in chemical changes. This will translate into biological effects, and if body cannot sufficiently compensate them, these biological effects will ultimately result into adverse health effects. Understanding this pathway is the first step in protecting our health because we can see right now where we can intercept and prevent adverse effects from happening. The most effective place is the beginning. 
limiting exposure of our body to electromagnetic fields. If there's no exposure, there's no problem. Intercepting with physical mechanism or chemical changes would be very complicated. So the last phase where we can effectively interact is biological effects. We can help our body to compensate them so they will not translate into adverse health effects. At that stage, we are just mitigating consequences and it's usually too late. Okay, so let's look at this pathway in practice on example of heat shock protein induction. Heat shock protein is activated when our body is in too hot environment, which could harm our cells. But electromagnetic field can also activate specific domain of DNA of this protein, which is different than the domain that is activated by heat. Okay, so electromagnetic field activates heat shock protein. So we know that living cells react to electromagnetic fields as a harmful agent. Heat shock protein helps our cells to survive. So healthy cells will have a higher probability of survival, but also diseased cells will have a higher probability of survival. And these cells may replicate. If these cells replicate uncontrollably for longer time so that our body cannot compensate for that, malignancy may develop. So we know that long-term exposure to electromagnetic fields uh, can increase the risk of cancer. We have just illustrated how prolonged phone calls can result in acoustic neuroma, which would be better to prevent from happening. But there are also many other biological effects that can result in harmful health effects. We know that non-ionizing radiation can harm genetic material and lead to mutations. It can also damage DNA strand, which may also prevent protein transcription. This essentially means that our body cannot produce important proteins and enzymes that perform many tasks that our body needs to function properly. We also know that mitochondrial DNA is 10 times more vulnerable to these effects. Mitochondria are our cell power plants. So if these are damaged, cell will produce less energy. Electromagnetic fields can also increase oxidative stress by many ways. We know that excessive reactive oxygen species production leads to inflammation and cellular damage. Free radicals may damage DNA, cellular membrane or neural tissue. Neural tissue is especially vulnerable because there is a lot of uh, freely or loosely bound iron. There is less activity of antioxidants and neural tissue repairs very slowly. So prolonged exposure to electromagnetic fields may lead to excessive free radicals production and this may result in cognitive impairments, which may range from just forgetting things to the brain dysfunction, but also increase symptoms of Alzheimer disease or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. These adverse health effects usually take some time to develop, but we can uh, see some adverse health effects much faster. This would be case of sleep disruption because electromagnetic fields can effectively decrease melatonin production. Melatonin is a very important hormone that helps our body to regenerate, but also to fall asleep at the first place. Electromagnetic fields also can prevent sleeping by generation of action potentials by activating voltage gating ion channels. Basically, they are generating noisy brain activity, so our brain is more active than it should be during the sleep. 
So electromagnetic fields will intercept with sleeping both on hormonal and also on neurological level. We can test it out by putting strong Wi-Fi filter under our bed. Either we will not fall asleep at all, or we will have disrupted sleep cycle, which results in impaired well-being, regeneration and productivity. If we don't have good sleep, uh, the next day usually is not as good as it could be. One way to prevent that from happening is to turn off Wi-Fi router for the night. This is an example of simple effective protective measures on which we look during the complete protection section, which is most important part of this presentation. So we will find out how to protect ourselves effectively. First, we will look into methodology, how I have evaluated which effects are most helpful and which measures are most effective. We will look into protective principles that can be applied in any situation. Then we will look into most effective measures for 10 most risky technologies. And we also look into extending this protection for individual situations. For evaluating risks, I use science and data that guide me in making evidence-based choices. We've seen uh, analysis of competing hypotheses, which is very useful for difficult decision-making, which helped me to decide whether or not electromagnetic fields can result in adverse health effects. Now we will use uh, risk analysis, which is golden standard for evaluating risks and effective protection measures. Here we have a risk matrix with probability derived from quality of studies. Anecdotal studies, okay, someone has said that something happened, has the least probability, whereas epidemiologic studies and meta-analysis of multiple studies have uh, most probability as sent to them. On the horizontal axis, we can see consequences from negligible of things like impaired sleep quality up to very severe in case of systemic diseases like cancer or even birth defects. Within the summary of risk analysis, we can see sources of electromagnetic radiation, associated biological effects, G as genotoxic, O as oxidative stress, B increased permeability of blood-brain barrier, C cellular effects, and M melatonin. For each source or device, I have assigned impact and likelihood, which gives us risk level. From this overview, I have uh, dropped least risky technologies, which would have risk level in green color. And I have decided to accept the risk because it is pretty low. For the remaining technologies with significant risk of adverse effects, we have mitigation stage where I have proposed protective measures which decreased either impact or likelihood or both, which gives us risk level after mitigation. Right away, we can see that most risks can be very effectively decreased to the level where we can fully accept them. Protective principles should provide us most value for the least effort. This should be based on precautionary principle. This means that we should ensure that we receive as low ionizing radiation as reasonably achievable. Okay, so that we will effectively use modern technologies with mitigating risks as much as possible. 
practically we can use the Typhane rule, which is acronym for timely, far and necessary. We can use the devices for as little time as possible, be as far away from the sources of electromagnetic radiation as possible, and have activated only the functions that we absolutely need. With this knowledge, let's look into particular protection measures for the 10 most risky technologies. From the consumer electronics we used most, there are mobile phones at the first place. We can place mobile phones as far as possible from critical structures, okay, from the head or the genitals. We can also turn phone off or have it on airplane mode before going to sleep. It is good to make phone calls on the speakerphone or at least through wired headphones. It also helps if we call only at full signal. The less signal, the more power mobile phone needs to connect with base tower station, which increases our exposure. We can also turn off unused functions and applications running in the background. I don't use Bluetooth, so I have it disabled by default and I also do not need the data collection, so I have turned that off as well. When using computers, we can increase our distance, for example, having laptop on the desk despite its name. And when we are using it for offline activities, just turn off Wi-Fi or have it on airplane mode. And for internet connection, prefer a wired internet connection via Ethernet cable if it's possible. It also helps to have wired connection of peripherals like mouse or keyboard. Wi-Fi router can be turned off when not in use. It is also good to have a low power model, which not only reduces exposure, but also can save a significant money. It is better to use direct wired connection of the modem to the computer if possible. When we use headphones, it's better to use wired ones. Uh, there are also some shielded headphones or air tube headphones, which are pretty expensive, so I would consider them only in case where most of my day consists of calling, but otherwise I would use classical wired headphones and would be good to go. If you can prefer a speaker, it's a bit safer for no costs. If we have children, we might use wireless nanny to monitor them. Preferably, we should visit them personally and alternatively, we can use wire transmission via webcam connected to computer in other room. But if we are absolutely sure that we need to use wireless nanny, okay, let's find product with only the necessary functions, and if possible, we would prefer an analog device, which should be safer than the digital one. Let's move into the healthcare. When we have dentist appointment, we might be offered multiple variants of dental fillings. It is best to avoid metallic ones, and I would personally prefer dental filling from photocomposite material which on one hand looks very nice and on the other hand is safe. When we are considering dental braces, the most safe are foil braces, which are also most comfortable, but also most expensive. So we might uh, rather consider removable braces and we should consult our dentist whether these 
can yield expected benefits for us. If yes, it's great. If not, I would accept the risk for the two or three years wearing the fixed metallic braces. Let's move to emerging technologies. From the older new technology, there is smart meter. If we can, it's better to use a classic analog meter with a wired connection. If we need to use smart meter and can choose a model, I would choose smart meter with sporadic batch data transmission, which uh, should be safer. From the truly emerging technologies, we might focus on head-mounted displays for virtual or augmented reality. These are near critical structures, we are wearing them on the head for prolonged time and they have very complex fields. So any protective measures are double as important as with any other technology. First, we can turn off Wi-Fi if we don't use it. Okay, so if we are playing games on virtual reality headset, we will use only offline games, or if we are using it for traveling, we will pre-download uh, videos for offline watching. Then we will disconnect from the Wi-Fi, watch the video. We can also turn off background updates for times when we need to be connected and work with headset which is connected to Wi-Fi. With turning off background updates, there comes responsibility for regularly updating device manually. Okay, so I would update it at least once per day or if I use it like one day per week, each time I start the device, I would update it. Some headsets support uh, wireless connection to computer, but I would prefer using a long cable if it has at least three meters or more. I don't mind that it's connected through cable. If we are using headsets for development, it is better to use batch data updates when developing applications. From the technological perspective, we have done as much as we could, but there still will be some biological effects happening. So we can help our body to compensate them by vitamin prophylaxis before using the headset. So we will take vitamins, and we can increase our safety most by reducing the length of use and taking regular breaks. Let's move into living and residency. It's great to check the surroundings for sources of electromagnetic fields when we are moving to a new place. We don't need any specialized equipment for that because we already have most effective sensor in our body. This is our eyes. We can look around for how many mobile tower base stations can we see. Also, how many high voltage lines or transformer stations and are there any heavy industries or factories. We can also use our smartphone to find out number of Wi-Fi networks that it can connect to. If it detects only like three or four Wi-Fi networks, it will be much safer than if we can see 15 or 20. In case of buying property, we can also study the city development plan. If there are any plans for building industry zones nearby, we can also test electric circuits with an electrician and consider professional measurement of electromagnetic fields. When we are building a house, we can achieve most in the project phase. We can plan low emission electrical wirings, which could include shielded wires, circuit breakoffs, and 
also specialized circuit with power switch for bedroom. So we will only leave a lamp or light and everything else would be switched off. If we are very sensitive to electromagnetic fields, we might consider as remote location as practical for us. If we are living in a city, we can consider minor adjustments like using shielding foil for windows or shielding net for bed. We should learn how to use them safely because they can protect us from external fields, but we shouldn't use electronic devices in the shielded space. Okay, so if we would use phone for calling in the shielded bed, this would amplify the signal in the area. So and we don't want to turn our bed into something like microwave oven. If we are living in our own house, we can consider more extensive modifications like purchasing windows with shielding finish or adjusting walls with shielding paint or metal foil. These modifications are pretty expensive because they require specialized knowledge and also expensive materials. Let's move to automobility. We should use only the necessary electronics, especially for younger journeys. Basic system needs to be always activated. Things like onboard computer, power steering, brakes, car lighting, and so on needs to be always on. We usually activate additional system as we need them, like GPS navigation or assistance functions. We can turn off premium services when we not actively use them. This might include various transmission of analytical data, which is useful for manufacturer, but uh, as drivers, we don't need them. And also, if we have built-in screens in the seats, they also usually don't have to be on. What we can do in any car is making phone calls outside after driving. This both improves our safety as well as exposure to electromagnetic radiation. When we are buying a car, it's best to prefer a model with optimal electronic accessories. Purchasing model with only the systems that I need. This will also help to save us significant money. If we plan to purchase an electric car, Let's consider models with an emission-free internal combustion engine like hydrogen or bio LPG, which is uh, most ecological and available at the moment. In future, we might also use synthetic gasoline with classical combustion engines. Okay, so let's now look into extending these protection measures for some less risky technologies. If we have television, it's best to have classical flat TV with LED or LCD display, okay? No smart TV. It also shouldn't be used as a monitor substitute for prolonged period of time. If you use it like a few hours in a week, it's okay, but it shouldn't be eight hours per day. From the light sources, Wolfram bulb emits less non-ionizing radiation than halogen bulb, which emits less radiation than lead, and this is safer than fluorescent lamp. From this, we can derive which light source use for which situation. So I would use Wolfram bulb by default, mostly in bedroom or for reading lamps. We can use it also for working table, but if we need a lot of light there, we can consider a halogen lamp, which would be most suitable for that. 
LED lights are very effective for ambient uh, room lighting and I would consider fluorescent lamp only for hallways or outdoor lighting. Many devices are powered via cables, so we should prefer grounded power cables. These are with two sticks and one hole or one stick and two holes in case of sockets. We can plug cables into a power strip with power button and switch it off before going to sleep. If it's not possible, we can at least increase the distance from the cables. If we use projector for presentations, we usually use it for a short time. And uh, if it's possible and convenient for the event, we should disable Wi-Fi and use by contention instead. If we wear glasses, these might have metallic frames. It's metal near the critical structures. So it's better to use glasses with plastic or wooden frames. For ebook reader, we should disable Wi-Fi when we're not using it and also prefer LCD display instead of e-ink. If we use microwave oven, we might consider increasing the distance. Especially for older devices used over many years, the lid might not close as tightly as it should, so some microwave radiation may leak out. So best practice is coming back when the meal is cooked. In home, we might consider a hot plate or eating a cold meal that doesn't require cooking. We should also place fridge away from places where we spend most time, like the bedroom or living room. In public transportation, it's best to prefer seats away from the engine. In case of bus, engine is usually located in the back of the vehicle. We can also use headphones where calling and call only if necessary. If we want to make our surrounding safer, we might use the phone on the side where are less people. We can also enjoy offline content, okay, so we can re-download podcasts and then listen them during the travel without connection to wireless networks. Let's now move into ensuring public safety. There is a system of rules and oversight that ensures that exposure to non-ionizing radiation is monitored and controlled. There are international and national guidelines that exist to protect the public. These are developed by expert organizations like the ICNIRP and FCC. These guidelines are grounded in scientific uh, research. It establishes safety standards, enforces compliance and reflects the latest scientific knowledge. These guidelines are focusing mostly on well-established thermal biological effects of electromagnetic fields. Therefore, I perceive them as baseline effectively protecting us from acute health effects. This system may be further improved by implementing regulation based on ALARA principle. We can use, for example, tax bonus for companies that apply effective protective measures based on the precautionary and ALARA principle. In the role of telecommunications services provider, I would uh, implement such regulation by minimizing the number of base tower stations and their power. I would also share infrastructure among providers of telco services on the industry-wide level. By these two measures, I would effectively implement Alara principle and then start collecting tax bonus on a continual basis. For residential areas, we should reflect ALARA in rules for city development plan 
establishing low electromagnetic field zones and also embedding rules for building design, such as using shielded wirings. Precautionary measures should be implemented especially for places with sensitive groups. Uh, schools should limit wireless data use, both Wi-Fi and mobile data, by school rules and establish low electromagnetic field zones to minimize children's exposure to electromagnetic fields. Maternity hospitals and hospitals in general should minimize electromagnetic fields in bedrooms. Surrounding areas should also minimize electromagnetic radiation towards these buildings in compliance with an additional regulation. So if there are plans to build a base star station, it's okay, but it uh, should uh, emit least possible amount of electromagnetic radiation towards hospital and most of the power should go in other directions. Let's look how implementing protective measures can bring benefits and improve our corporate responsibility. Instended protection of employees and customers can mitigate health damage and legal liability risks. It may also enhance brand value, customer loyalty and overall profitability. We can start by forecasting the development of product safety standards. This will reduce costs from product recalls, costly modifications and associated expenses. Recently, one particular model of smartphone was found exceeding hygienic limits for electromagnetic radiation in France. This can be solved either by releasing new software update, which will reduce the radiation below safety limits, or if that wouldn't be possible, all devices would have to be recalled, which would be significantly more expensive. Now we'll focus on employee protection, because protecting employees from excessive exposure to electromagnetic fields in the workplace enhances employee well-being and may result in increased productivity, reduced absenteeism and lower turnover rates. We can approach it by implementing it into policies and procedures to minimize exposure to electromagnetic fields. This may include increasing and recommending maximal reasonable distance from electronic devices and using cable peripheries for computers. We may also establish low EMF zones for relaxation. We can also provide protective equipment or safer devices when reasonable. This might include cable if phones using Ethernet connection for computers and also shielded head-mounted displays. What we can do everywhere is increasing employee awareness as trainings can help employees to adhere to safety measures. We may emphasize that electromagnetic fields may have health consequences and that protection is also personal responsibility. We can propose implementing ALARA principle for particular situations, outline simple protective measures we have just seen, and this is also a great place to link the protection to company policies as appropriate. From the perspective of consumer protection, enhanced customer safety improves brand perception because ethical business practices appeal to a growing market segment focused on responsible consumption. Product safety standards and electromagnetic compliance can also be enhanced for improving company profitability by increasing market share and reducing costs from product recalls or litigations. Practically, we can achieve this by ensuring product safety by design. Adhering to established safety standards and assuring that devices emit radiation within safe limits is a good starting point. It can be further enhanced by deploying devices with the highest protection settings, lowest radiation levels, for increasing the electromagnetic compatibility 
and also improving electromagnetic safety by default. We can also embed shielding of transmitter electronics to achieve electromagnetic safety by design, which is by far the most efficient measure. This is especially important for devices where nearby critical structures for prolonged time, like head-mounted displays and smartphones. We may design shielding of transmitter electronics in a way that the side facing our head is shielded, but the radiation goes in other directions outside the body. Devices shielded by design can reach to new customer segment and generate additional revenue stream. By using both approaches, we can implement the Alara principle in a way that proves that the company truly cares about safety of customers, which may increase reputation, strengthen brand, help to acquire new customers, and fortify loyalty of existing customers. Overall, enhancing employee and customer safety can yield benefits to all stakeholders, thus fostering a positive sustainable business ecosystem. Particularly, company owners benefit from enhanced brand value, reduced risks and higher revenues. Employees experience improved workplace safety, job satisfaction and long-term health benefits. Customers enjoy peace of mind, better product experience and improved health. Communities then benefit from responsible business practices and reduced environmental impact. Now we will look into detailed examples of protection measures for particular situations. This will be also an exercise as we will try to find out right protective measures in particular situations. For example, when we need to make phone calls, we can use speaker mode when we are home or wired headphones where we are in work. Now try to think about how you can ensure electromagnetic safety before you go to bed. You can turn off Wi-Fi router and place your phone as far as convenient. You can also switch it off or put it into an airplane mode. Disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and cellular data. You can also switch off cables and lights. What we can do to improve electromagnetic safety in schools? How can we improve our protection when working with computer? And what to consider in dentist appointment? In schools, we can minimize Wi-Fi use by deploying Ethernet connection for computers in computer classroom. We may establish low EMF zones in classrooms. For example, if we don't use any electronic devices at all, we can ban using mobile phones by school rules. Or if we are using tablets and computers for improved learning, we can consider a semicircular bench arrangement and also teach healthy EMF habits. So during the classroom, students may use internet for finding information, but then switch off, make notes during the classroom, and at the end, quickly connect to Wi-Fi to synchronize data to the cloud. All major vendors like Google or Microsoft support offline work and syncing to cloud. When using computers, we may consider using wired peripheral devices like keyboard mouse and internet via Ethernet cable. If we cannot use Ethernet cable, then we should use Wi-Fi only when we are actively using it. Laptops should be on the desk rather on the laptop. In dentist appointment, we may prefer dental fillings from uh, non-metallic 
photocomposite material. How we can improve our safety when choosing an apartment? How about public transportation? So we can find out number of Wi-Fi networks nearby home and also check surroundings for sources of electromagnetic radiation. How many mobile tower base stations are around or high voltage lines, transformer stations or industrial machines. In public transportation, we may prefer seats away from the engine, limit calling and use headphones, but also enjoy offline content, predominant podcasts for listening. Now let's focus on effective protection during various life stages. If we would simplify it, then the older we are, more relaxed approach we can have, but more specific measures we might need in context of our lifestyle or medical conditions. Let's start from the beginning in the prenatal development. During pregnancy, it's very important to minimize all stressors, including electromagnetic radiation. This means no device on the belly in the first place. We should carry a smartphone in knee pocket. The smartphone should be online only for emergencies and necessary communication. It would also help us to scrutinize surroundings for electromagnetic sources for places where we spend most of the time. What is very effective is also limiting synergistic effects of electromagnetic fields with other stressors, including psychic. So stress management is important part in trying to perceiving uh, stress as good, so-called eustress, and also relieving this excessive stress by performing brief exercises. We might also consider resolving trauma with psychologists, if we have any, and build sources of positive emotions. Aside from stress management, high quality sleep will help us a lot, as melatonin, which is produced during the sleep, helps with regeneration and repairing things that are needed. We may also improve our nutrition by increasing intake of vitamins, either from food or food supplements, increasing amount of fish or nuts in our diets, basically food with high content of omega-3, EPA, DHA, and also know which food to use sparsely, although it can be beneficial, such as turmeric. Birthday. During the infancy, it's very important to proactively limit exposure by device placement and checking the surroundings. If we decide to give tablet or mobile phone to our children, it should be always offline. There might be pre downloaded educational games and it might be also useful to start building healthy associations by situation constraints, borrowing the device only, for example, in doctor's waiting room and not every afternoon in home. During the childhood, we can teach healthy EMF habits as a game. We can use thrift, telling for that, for example, that there are good valves, which make candy and bad valves, and the longer we use electronic devices like phone or computer, the longer the bad valves may do bad things, preventing good valves from cooking candy. 
for using devices as little time as possible. We can offer small prizes and for older children, we can also consider developing a scoring system so they can manage themselves and then just ask us when collecting the prizes. It's important to limit wireless exposure by family rules and we can prefer using web devices and if we are working on home office we probably will have dedicated wi-fi networks for home use and for work use we have multiple networks we can set active hours on wi-fi router so the, each network is active only when needed during young adulthood we can self-educate ourselves and practice healthy EMF habits. It is very useful to perform regular benefit-risk considerations, thinking about which measures will help us and, for example, use wireless networks only when they provide us the most value. It's also great to minimize long-term effects by limiting synergistic effects of multiple electromagnetic fields. This consists of using as few devices at the same time as possible and consider our surroundings as factor for deciding where to move. During productive age, it's great to have personalized electromagnetic protective measures. Top 10 protective measures are great baselines and we can extend them based on our individual needs. If we use television or travel and especially if we are sensitive to electromagnetic fields, this is the time where we can achieve most by lifestyle changes. Once we establish the protective measures that help us most, and incorporate them into our daily routine, then we can consider benefit risks only occasionally when we have new devices or when we are in a new situation. For the workplace, we might consider electromagnetic fields as one factor when considering new job. If we work in office, we might prefer remote or hybrid arrangement. If we have to work on site, then traditional office is safer than open office. In any way, we can optimize our wireless exposure as much as possible by, for example, using wired headphones or spending some time in relaxed zones. If we work in field, Good starting point is using protective equipment and shielded devices if they are available. Good news is that industrial devices may be safer than the consumer alternatives because they have tighter limits for technical electromagnetic compatibility. We can further support our bodies to mitigate the consequences of biological effects by vitamin prophylaxis, for example, drinking green tea with lemon or vitamin C before going to work, and compensate it afterwards by physical exercise in clean environment, both clean air and low electromagnetic load. It's very important to limit other stressors as much as possible chemical, physical, as well as psychical ones. Since our 50s, we might practice healthy AMF habits in more leisure way, have the basic protections in our daily routine and personalize it in context of our medical conditions so we can carry smartphone in knee pocket, but if we have artificial knee from metallic material, it would be better to carry smartphone in bag or if we are women in regular pocket as well. It's good to limit all stressors, 
electromagnetic field chemical psychical physical and also use vitamin prophylaxis and regular physical exercise in clean environment. We may perform regular health checkups and explore synergies of lifestyle improvements. If we eat the healthy food or we start exercise, it will help us to reduce health effects of electromagnetic fields, but also improve our overall condition and can decrease symptoms of diseases. During active retirement, we might practice healthy EMF habits just leisurely. Top 10 protection measures are good baseline, which can be personalized in context of our medical conditions. We may limit stressors by, for example, eating more organic food. Very important is relaxing and enjoying life, going to trips, regularly exercising, having fun. As a very nice life purpose at this point of life is sharing knowledge with younger generations. If we are retiring passively, I would consider EMF measures only if needed. So for example, if we cannot sleep, it might be wise to turn off Wi-Fi to improve sleep quality and place electronic equipment as far as reasonable, but I wouldn't go any far beyond that. More important is balanced nutrition, rich in vitamins, proteins and fiber. Of course, plenty of clean water. The greatest thing we can do is enjoy small pleasures. We can ask questions like, what can I be grateful today for? And finding multiple answers. Very valuable may be using all benefits of modern technologies. Very nice activity is remote traveling via virtual reality headset. If I spend most of my day in my bed, Traveling to see or visiting cities has tremendous value for me. So I would accept risks of the technology and just enjoy it. I can even find some benefits in risks of this technology. For example, if I am taking Parkinson's disease medication, then VR headset increases blood-brain barrier permeability, which will result in absorbing more of the medication by the brain tissue. So in this way, it can help me a bit. Let's now move into executive summary. And let's start by forecasting risks for imaging technologies based on what we have learned. We know that our digital landscape keeps expanding, continually increasing our exposure to non-ionizing radiation. Emerging technologies present new challenges. Virtual or augmented reality headsets have complex field near critical structures. Internet of Things exposes us continually to multiple wireless sources and 5G networks have strong absorption by shallow surface of the body. Therefore, updated guidelines should protect us from forecasted risks. Ongoing research catches only some risks before widespread use of the technology and remaining risks may be catched uh, from the results of epidemiological studies, which usually take 10 and more years. So some technologies might already be obsolete by the time. Therefore, I perceive proactive electromagnetic protection is essential to safeguard our well-being. We can see parallel in cybersecurity patching after internet adoption, which has proven fairly complicated because it requires immense resources for quick response to many threats. Effective solution for that would be performing risk assessment and implementing safety measures for forecasted risks before releasing the technology. Making the technology inherently safer would 
help to save a lot of costs. We can see similar situation in electromagnetic safety as there is ongoing uh, very slow patching. If there are new risks, there might be additional restrictions which might require redesigning new technologies which is very expensive. So most of the time we just spend more money on treatment of chronic diseases. All these hurdles could be effectively solved by proactive risk management based on ALARA and precautionary principle. This would be much more efficient in the long-term perspective. It is scalable and simple to navigate and it would save significant costs to all stakeholders. Particularly countries would benefit from enhanced public health, decreased relapse incidence, which would result in significantly lower health care costs and increased productivity. Regulators would have very powerful regulatory framework, which would be simple, transparent, effective and applicable for future technologies. Companies that adopt proactive measures for improving customer and employee safety can benefit from reduced risk of device recalls, frequent regulation changes and litigations, but also have enhanced reputation and consumer trust, as well as reduced reliability. They will also fulfill corporate responsibility towards employees and customers in this area. As citizens, if we implement individual protective measures, we will experience improved health and longer life in higher quality, as we will have reduced risks of chronic diseases, and we can also have peace of mind that we have done everything that we could. So as we've seen, electromagnetic fields are an inseparable part of our lives, thus requiring awareness and caution. Protection from non-ionizing electromagnetic fields is in the interest of our health and well-being. Therefore, it's essential to stay updated on current knowledge and practice safety measures for minimizing exposure to electromagnetic fields. And last, let's look at most effective tips for improving our electromagnetic safety with the least effort. The seven quick wins start with practicing typhane rule, timely, far necessary, spending as least time in electromagnetic fields as possible, being as far from electronic devices as convenient, and using only necessary functions. Ensure refreshing sleep by limiting cell phone use and avoiding blue light sources one hour before bedtime. We can further improve it by disabling electronics like smartphone, Wi-Fi router, laptop and cables by switch. When calling, use speaker mode or hands-free and call outside vehicles. Regularly check your surroundings for electromagnetic radiation sources. Prefer dental fillings with photocomposite material and also safer technologies which is using cable connection over wireless and also mechanical devices which are more safe than analog electronics, which is more safe than digital electronics. Help your body to mitigate biological effects by supplementing vitamins and regularly exercising in low EMF location with clean air. We can leverage these seven quick tips to massively improve our protection against harmful effects of electromagnetic fields for like three or four minutes per day. I believe information in this presentation will help you to live healthier and happier life and thank you for your attention.